Now, if God has given you the gift of faith to believe in the gospel, then as a new creature in Christ, you now desire the things of God rather than the things of the world. The old sinful nature is no longer your master and can no longer dominate you. However, that old nature will continue to cling to you as long as you live in this life. One guy put it this way, The sin that continues to dwell in us as Christians does not possess and control us. It still maintains itself in us, but is not really a part of us. It is now a foreign element that has not yet been totally expelled. Sin is like a defeated tyrant that has been driven out of the capital city of our heart. This usurper can now only lurk around in the outlying territories and lob fiery arrows over the wall. He would like to become complete master again and exercise unrestricted tyranny, but cannot as long as we are controlled by the Spirit. This is why the Christian life is one of continual confession of the sin that remains within us and repentance of that sin. It is the constant strengthening of our faith by prayer and fellowship with other Christians, hearing the gospel preached as baptized members of Christ's body and partaking of the Lord's Supper. This is why we are encouraged to always walk by the Spirit rather than by the old sinful nature. Galatians 5.16 tells us, Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. As Christians, our ultimate goal now is to glorify God. Well, what does that mean? To glorify something is to make it be seen in its best possible light. To glorify God is to give Him the adoration and obedience due Him for creating and redeeming us. We love Him because He first loved us. We obey Him because He is so worthy of our obedience. We praise Him because He has freely, and while we were still enemies of Him, made us sons and daughters through His beloved Son. So after all that we've said in these previous videos, the question is, whose authority are you under? If you find yourself riding the fence on what to do with Jesus Christ, then this really is the issue, isn't it? Every human being is under the authority of someone. There are only two camps in the human experience. There are no wards of the court who are orphans and simply belong to no one when it comes to this issue. Jesus said we are either children of God or children of the devil. Remember back when the flight of TWA 800? 200 plus people boarded the plane that day. Each person represented a life filled with relationships, responsibilities, joys, troubles, secrets, and so on. All these people walked on that plane with various needs in their lives. Some needed financial help. Others needed marital counseling. Some were depressed and without hope. Some were addicted to drugs or alcohol. But every single one of those people, including the flight crew, shared one common need, although most of them were totally unaware of it. The unfelt need they all shared was to be delivered from their sin and the wrath of God. This need became all too real just seconds after the plane exploded at an altitude of 8,000 feet over the coast of Long Island. Each soul on that plane was separated from its body and taken suddenly and unexpectedly either to heaven where Christ presently reigns as risen King and Lord or to the place of darkness and pain to await final judgment and condemnation. People die every day, and even though we know it, happens all the time. From reports on television and the paper, we continue to live as if we somehow are immune to it. But we're not. Death is coming to us all, and it is a final destination. Daniel 12 tells us that those who sleep in the dust of the earth, those people who have died, shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Satan knows he is lost in his attempt to overthrow God's kingdom. He knows his doom is sure. He would like nothing more than to take as many people down with him as possible. If misery loves company, then the devil lusts for wicked people to experience the torment that he, that he is going to have to endure. You need to know that God, right this minute, is giving you time to turn away from your sin. Judgment is coming, and it may be today or far in the future, but today is the acceptable time for salvation. 
Flee to the cross and live. Allow the blood of Jesus to wash you clean and give you an eternal future with God and ultimate joy and fullness in eternal life. 2 Corinthians 6 tells us, Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Is God drawing you to himself? If you do not know the love of Jesus Christ and his work to save you, may God be opening your eyes this very moment. Believe, confess, repent, and obey, and live today and forever in the joy, peace, and comfort of the Lord Jesus Christ.